I think Lodo was just making up for lost time. He's like, Terra Blade's a, a hero again? <laughs> All right, let's pick that every game, guys. Let's go. Let's just repeat it. First pick. All right, are we going to see the bands? That's the question. First phase bands are uh, very standard so far. The IO, uh, Darkseer, and a, a Lifestealer as well. Oh, and, and the Dazzle. Oh, that yeah. tells you something. Yeah, so that means the Liquid want to make sure they ban out heroes against us. And we've spoken about that before. Kuroki's very big on ne not necessarily banning meta heroes, but actually banning specific heroes per team. I, I, I really think, honestly, I think this is the right uh, strategy Ten against seconds. Alliance. I think you want to limit. Their cores are all very good. And recently, what I like oh, from their cores is they've been more interchangeable in terms of the roles that they've served in the game. But when when Alliance is really good is when they're getting those strong contributions from their supports. Yeah, they're gonna pick up a beast. The great part about the like certain heroes like Terror Blade coming back for Loda is that what no, Naha said is that we are able to see more times where you can fall back on Loda actually carrying the game rather than the traditional alliance, which is like a Loda picks up an initiator, temple controller from S4, and then you have Bulldog actually right. sometimes being the real two or even one position at times. Five seconds. Yeah, he's um. He's got the nickname Admiral Broodmother for a reason as well. Uh, he, he, he's oh, actually, I think he's you just actually made that up. No, no, no. Be, you just totally made that up. He, yeah, really? I, don't, I, don't I don't think, think I did. I think I've heard that thing. people say that one. Uh, no, his, his, uh, his Lone Druid and Nature's Prophet are two of the most played player hero combinations in the history of the game. And the reason he has that nickname is actually just because Paul is old and sometimes forgets things, just really? like Elder Spirit. What were we talking about? Huh? Elder Spirit. <laughs> Elder <laughs> Spirit. What a classic. It's a, it's a new hero. <laughs> oh, this is such a good open. I, I, I actually... So I think Phoenix Void is an opening that I've talked about before, just being absolutely terrifying in the hands of certain teams. And Phoenix Tide, especially for Liquid, has got to be right up there. Uh, we've seen what Mind Control can do on his Tide Hunter. They just get so much out of each Ravage. And of course, Drax is Phoenix. Absolutely devastating. This, this gives them so much protection around the egg. And Tide uh, matches up better against the Beastmaster if they go like some sort of 1v1 scenario. If, if Alliance do do the aggro like they like to do and free up Bulldog in a Beastmaster 1v1 scenario, Tidehunter matches up way better than the Faceless Void yep. would. So I think, like, Liquid to have this rather well planned out. I giving like the Beastmaster away. For spin of the, and they're going to go right back to the team. For spin of yes. the Life Stealer. I don't think they play particularly well with the Life Stealer, and Liquid play amazingly well. I would like to see it ban out every game. Terror Blade, I don't think they first picked it, but it was no, always, always second phase. It's always second or, fi it, it, or fifth pick. But it would have been, yeah. it would have been banned yeah, second phase 100%. Been banned. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of ways Terror Terror to deal with Terror Blade, I think, though. Like, just heavy amounts of AoE damage to kill, kill the illusion. They have to ban. In, in, in a starting game, though, in a starting game at a best of three, though, maybe you come out with just, like, you're willing to go with what you like the most in this game one and see if the enemy team can count. That's the reason why Terrorblade was so good in the other series, though. It was because they always picked Dire Slardar, and yeah. Yeah. Terrorblade has a lot of armor. He doesn't need an armor item to deal with that. So now that Team Liquid didn't actually pick the first phase Slardar, Alliance are probably second-guessing whether or not the Terrorblade was the right pick in the second phase or first phase, rather. But it almost always is banned in the second phase. I think there are many other carries that they could have done, and I don't think it matches up particularly well versus the Tidehunter in lane. So my thinking right now is that you have to you have to be worried about limiting Liquid's vision, right? You've seen them today in both games use the Ricky to get that scouting information. You saw them uh, in Manila use the scouting information from a bounty hunter as well as a Matumbum and Slark to set up that huge mind control ravage. I'm looking at which who do you ban here? Do you do you still ban Ricky even though it's not maybe not the best support combination with the Phoenix? Do you think about banning the Slark because that's what I'm really worried about, especially with Liquid off the dire side. I think Night Stalker is a bigger concern okay. because. Yeah. Phoenix, Night Stalker is a very weak combination, especially if you Iron Talon jungle, but Alliance don't punish that. They don't roam aggressively into the jungle. They don't like the Riki that much. They don't like the Bounty Hunter that much, and they actually like to play pretty greedily themselves. So I would like to see NS over the other choice. And if you pick something like Riki, I think it leaves you really exposed, because then you don't have uh, any disables outside of your Ravage, like hard stun so far, and you gotta, like you need some of those AoE dis disables yeah. to be able to deal with terribly. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm, this is Kuro telling Matsu, no, I'm not picking you, Lycan. Matsu's just like, <laughs> but why not? Five seconds. Doggy man for life. You need more magic, uh, magic damage cores, time. I think, to deal with the Terror Blade. I, I like Lion. Lion is decent. I also yeah. like uh, like Gyro and Luna in particular. I think versus Terror Blade works out pretty well. But I think just drafting. So Elder you Titan. think you think Luna is viable now? Against some matchups like Terror Blade, okay. I think it's fine. Uh, I think. Having Elder Titan would be really, really good, but there's only a handful of teams that do pick wow. up the ET. I'm not Ben with, I'm not, not with Ben on that one. No Luna, please. 
I am looking at this Ursa band, kind of yeah. wondering. They quit uh, running. They do run it. A few it. times, but it wasn't... It was always a fifth pick. Uh, I mean, that, that's like one of the liquid. But I just, I think, I think banning most of the time against liquid, banning Matu here, unless it's Life Stealer, banning Matu and Fate Five heroes is just kind of a mistake because both of those, they have a hero pool that's wide enough yep. that you're going to be able to fit one of their pretty good heroes into almost any Rush. lineup. They didn't want to pick take Slaughter in the first phase, but they still want to do Roach because they're dire. So what's the other yeah, hero that's going to Roach? It's going to be Ursa. There is still Death Prophet available. Oh, wait, actually, that's no, Ban. So yeah, that was the Ban. Now no. if they want to take Slaughter, it's into a Terror Blade. So what other heroes are there? They already have the Beastmaster for himself, which is also very good at the Roach. Yeah, yeah that's, that's spot on. There's like, how many other Roshan heroes are left? Like. Lycan's, eh. well, Lycan. Lycan is, and, and Lycan is decent. But. Yeah, and th then you would actually be countered, I think, by Alliance picking or up like Winter Luna. Wyvern or something. Or Luna. <laughs> or Troll Warlord, <laughs> guys. Troll Warlord. Yo, tro Which Troll is bad. Uh, Which we have seen. Yeah, there's yeah, the Slark. I, I just, I feel like Alliance Liquid gets so much out of these Invis heroes just for the scouting information. I, I, I would abandon it. I think Ben's argument about Alliance is very worried about the dire side advantage was completely on point. I still don't want to see Matumbaman Slark scouting for that mind control Tidehunter ever again. Oh yeah, he's a little bit better than Night Stalker because he's just Five far superior, I think, in scouting out nighttime and just avoiding those ganks because he can carry that Shadow Blade very early. Reserve time. Or blink. Yeah, Slark always matches up well against Beastmaster because you can always get off the Dark Pack to the Golds. So you've got a little bit of AoE damage early on from the Slark that can help you clear through the Terra Blade. He can close that distance uh, and jump onto the real Terra Blade and threaten him, and you don't have um, an opportunity to get the Sunder turnaround because of the ult. So is this just like insta-pick Rubik for the Ravage? Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is probably one of the best times oh, for Rubik shadow. if there ever is. Oh god, the Terror Blade Shadow Demon combination. Wow, somewhere, somewhere Purge is very happy. Hmm? Purge is very happy somewhere. Oh uh, yeah. Right now. Their team fight is just terrible right now though. Shadow Demon's pretty good if you want to constantly siege with the Terror Blade and that they have like good single target ultimates, like Beastmaster Roar for example, but it doesn't really seem to set up that well. There's no left track for them to even pair with it in the mid lane. So I'm curious as to what they're going to follow up. Maybe it's you know, got to be something weird. Like, time. are they doing some sort of support combination, like uh, yeah. Shadow Demon and Marana or Lena? Or... Marana's not good versus Tide or Slark, though. I agree. So I, I just don't know why they would pick Shadow Demon out of. Yeah, I'm not particularly sure. It's got to be a strat at hand. Oh, and God. what better way to be able to oh, slow oh, down the push of a God. Terror Blade than with an Elder Titan? He's got AoE clear. He's one of the best high ground defenders you could possibly have. And he sets up the Phoenix really well he as well. He counters Terror Blades so hard. Yeah. I think this is why you don't first phase a Terror Blade, why other teams don't. Because Elder Titan just Ten destroys seconds. him. You you take away like 20 armor, I would say, like 20 minutes into this game. Yeah, it's better oh, yeah. than Amplify Damage. Yeah. Oh, he's got one of the highest base armors and the highest edgy and edgy gains in the game. So you, you strip all that with the ET. And uh, this liquid lineup is just, even if it weren't against a Terra Blade, just the combo alone and knowing that they can execute it with the vision provided by the Slark is absolutely terrifying. They didn't have very many heroes left, I think, for S4 to really take control of this game. Queen of Pain's decent versus Slark. Heavy burst, AoE damage. S4's got to go big here. Him and Bulldog. Ten seconds, S4's got to like uh, win his lane matchup, which he's at a disadvantage because Fada's going to have the last pick here. And then he's got to win that matchup and then actually head to top and free up some space for Beastmaster, get a kill on Slark, speed up that Necronomicon. There's so many things that have to happen for Alliance in this kind of draft. Okay, so, so I, I slow down because I think I see what you're saying. What are, what are your lanes right here, right now? <laughs> Mid Queen of Pain, yeah, Beastmaster, maybe off lane, maybe four position. Okay, so you're just going to go ahead and safe lane try lane right now? I mean, as Alliance, it's just, it feels like such a, I guess you probably abuse Phoenix and Elder Titan. I don't know. I'm just, we'll see if Terrorblade aggro works for them with Shadow Demon. The ledge ban is pretty important. Uh, mm. yeah. When you have Elder Titan, you need some sort of plus armor. They already banned out of Dazzle in the first phase and banning out the lich, which they picked yesterday. Yeah. Terrorblade is just going to be dead, dead yeah. meat. They had uh, TV lich. They ran that yesterday. Liquid. Yes, they Time did. I mean, this is the this is really where I start to worry for Alliance because you look at these lineups where individually all five of their players are excellent on the hero that they're going to be playing, but I'm not Ten sure the hero the remaining. lineup synergizes like it needs to to beat this kind of combo-oriented lineup from Five Liquid. Seconds remaining. 
Yeah. Crow's so like, do you, do, you, do you want Viper? Do you want I Viper to win the Queen of Pain matchup? I think Invoker might be... Invoker's pretty good. Yeah. He's yeah. kind of gone away from that recently, though. Yeah. I mean, they banned the DK, they banned the DP, so I guess you can go Alchemist. It feels really, really greedy. Oh, yeah, Alchemist is okay, too. No, I, I would actually love to see the Invoker just for the absolutely sick combos. <laughs> oh man! I think Viper get the clap, be... free meteor. Oh, I know, I know. Look at yeah, look that's... at how much setup you have for Invoker. He just rains chaos on everything. I think Viper wins the matchup versus Quap, but it's really bad in the reflection with Terrorblade and yeah, Shadow Demon Illusions. Yep. The only reason I think Timber was... saw. Oh my! All right, well that's another high ground defender. This draft by Liquid. Huh? Oh my god. All right, very quickly before we go to the commentary team, who's had a better draft, Ben? I will definitely say Liquid. Just sit back and watch the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> Alan's hyped already. Cap? Liquid, but my boys' alliance are going to do it okay, through the power I, of friendship <laughs> and heart. <laughs> I was waiting for some sort of positive feel uh, from Cap on the end after he's realized that the draft did not go necessarily an a? his way. But he's, he's sticking with alliance. him. It's, it's all good. Uh, we'll hear more from our panel members, of course, at the end <laughs> of our first game in this best of three series as we now head over to the commentary team. It's Bambo, Blitz, it, and Odie Pixel. Thank you very much indeed, Paul. We're getting ourselves ready for this series. Alliance versus Liquid. We've just seen the two drafts. You guys, I mean, to start with you, uh, Bambo, what, what are you thinking going into this one? Are you happy with what Alliance like, has done I like here? Alliance draft. I think it's well-rounded. They have a good chance, yeah. Would you agree, Blitz, or would you say Liquid's got the upper hand this time? I think Liquid has the upper hand. I think team fight wise it's going to be really easy for them, and I don't think they have enough control for the Slark going into the late game. They just need to not get outplayed. They just need <laughs> This was That's Bambo's, like, it. mantra. He's like, you can win any game as long as you outplay the enemy team. I was like, all right. I mean, c considering what Alliance has done here, I mean, interesting to see, obviously, with the Terra Blade, a hero that they've uh, really been liking so far this tournament. Yesterday, I think it was picked four times. They won three of the four games. Here, they're bringing it back again. They're confident enough to pick it up as that second pick in a draft. I mean, surely if you're picking up a Terra Blade that early, you're leaving yourself very exposed to Liquid to, to kind of deal with it however they've wanted. And obviously, the turns at this time round with something like the Elder Titan that's going to be great against the, the, the high base armor of the Terra Blade. You know, just getting the aura around the TP and then allowing seconds. someone like the Slark to jump in. Surely that kind of wrecks the Terra Blade. You would imagine the Slark jumping in and Cobb goes down. I guess that, yeah, that's that's true as well. Yeah, if uh, S4 can land those uh, big, big Sonic waves and S4 Quab, it certainly is uh, that we certainly had a few Pog champs so over the, the games that we've seen him pick it up. I guess that's it. You can certainly see him maybe being able to play around the Slark. Um, but at the same time, yeah, you might be bursting down the slot, but I mean, other than the slot, who else are you killing? I mean, it's a very yeah, hard lineup to burst down as a Queen of Pain, isn't it? Your, your Tide Hunters, uh, there's a oh, point where Timber yeah. gets to, I guess at least you don't really care about the reactive armor. I mean, if what, what? a good game. Like, yeah. If he gets a fast Orchid, I think he can do a lot this game. Yeah, like, I this think... Phoenix, this Elder Titan, they're all like squishy. Yeah, One jump, they're pretty much dead. Most of this game, I think I agree with Bambo, comes down to the Queen of Pain and yeah. how much she can do because she's the tempo creator for Alliance. AK is going to make things happen in the early game. The Queen of Pain has to make things happen in the mid game. Jerry's got to go. And it SDS like have sick, sick disruptions. Yeah, I believe in EGM. I mean, are you guys a fan of the Shadow Demon? This is something, again, that we're not seeing a lot of teams pick up. I mean, why have Alliance done it this game? Is it just a help for, for that inevitable kind of high ground siege with the extra illusions from the Terra Blade? It's 14 seconds illusions. Yes. 14 seconds. Imagine having a Terra Blade with 40 seconds. Like, it's actually insane. You can literally spam it two seconds after it's gone again. Yep. It makes it very difficult to defend, but that does mean that Alliance have to be in an advantageous position if you're going to use it like that. Yeah, but if you get there, it's like, they pretty much can get a Rex without having any contest. Yeah. That's the scary part for me, though, is how do you get through the team fight of Liquid? And the high ground defense from them is quite good, too. The Timber Saw, I feel, is going to work pretty well this game, but... I mean, I do, and I feel so conflicted about this. Just more Weber. That's a good start. He's gonna have a good game. Top lane, Kuroki. Just taking down the ball around the sideline. Bulldog, he's got the backup of Ake. I mean, Ake on his uh, Enchantress, uh, obviously one of the heroes he's incredibly comfortable on, but it seems to be a hero that we've seen lines kind of bring to the fray sometimes and not always worked out in this current meta. I mean, how does Ake make the Enchantress work this game? Does he have to sit up top and, and help secure this lane for Bulldog, or can we expect to see him look for some early rotations towards mid and such? I like his top rotation. Like, they have nothing to do against it. 
He can just send creeps on the Slark, and the Slark's gonna have a hard time less hitting. He's gonna miss at least like half the CS. At the same time, don't you feel like he's not gonna? I don't think he has kill potential up there, and but in he a lot of have to kill. That's the thing. You just have to like disrupt the lane. Don't you feel like Beastmaster just? You could get free farm on Beastmaster by just going to the jungle with Iron Talon, right? Yeah, but if you can disrupt the enemy carry, it's always better. You think so? In my opinion. At the moment, Ake just uh, warding back uh, Jarex with the shockwave spam. Making sure that Jarex has a hard time getting anything done, trying to, to go for some kind of a pull. He's only going to catch a range creep, so I mean, indeed, Ake is being incredibly disruptive in this lane up top. Uh, towards the mid, the matchup between S4 and Fana. S4 linking himself away, keeping it safe. He's got a rune. And uh, 13 for 3 against Fana's 10 for 1. I mean, is this lane that's expected to be kind of a wash, or, or could we see someone coming out on top eventually here? I think I played it in the past, and most of the time the Queen of Pain has a slight advantage. I think Bambo would agree there, just because uh, it's almost impossible for the Queen of Pain to die, and she has some kill potential and high nuke damage. So there is some possibility for uh, turn around plays, but at the same time, both of them can just farm. It's pure one-on-one. -on -one. They're just gonna share. Yeah, they're Wait. just... That's what we're seeing right now. Go for me. Mind control on his tide, halfway through level two at the moment. Uh, CS wise, he's not really getting it as well, so he's certainly having a lot, a lot of a harder time on his own off lane compared to Bulldog. But obviously, Bulldog has had the backup of Ake, and uh, Jerax is coming back up here once again. Ake keeping tabs on the whereabouts of the two supports of Liquid, making sure that the space is there for Bulldog and the space is taken away from Matuba Man on the slot. But regardless of the pressure that's being put on, Matuba Man still finding pretty good farm, 17 for three. And uh, looking back towards the bottom, one of the reasons why Mind Control is suffering in terms of XP is because Loader doing a lot of denying, 12 at the moment. And again, go for the aggression onto Mind Control. Mind Control going for the spot with the TP out, and it's just in time. But as we can see, just a lot of pressure being put on the tide. It's, it's not an easy lane here for Mind Control. Yes. Yeah, it's the Iron Talon. Yeah. The OP Talon. This is something I wanted to ask you about, Bambo, at some point. You're playing off lane, you know you're against a dual lane. The mentality is. I know a lot of offlaners feel like they should do something, right, in the offlane? It's because when you feel your own carry is getting pressured, you feel like you have to do the same thing. But most of the time it's the wrong mindset. Like, this game, I don't think he should be there at all. You think he should have just gotten Iron Talon from the get-go? Because yep. he could be almost level 4 right now. And and he should be stacking the Ancient as well, so like, he could actually outfarm the Beast early. Yeah. I, I think that most Radiant's of the time, Owen, it just comes down to this mentality attack. thing where you feel like, okay, the enemy offlane's getting a lot, I should be getting a similar amount because I'm only against a dual lane, but at the same token, has, he hasn't slowed down Lotus Farm at all. Like, his presence in the lane hasn't slowed down Lotus Farm at all. And it's barely it's costing EGM down. anything. I mean, so overall, uh, really, I guess the mid lane being the close one, uh, but yeah, the fact that the no. side lanes kind of added together are going in favor of Alliance. I mean, hey! when you look at Liquid's draft, is it a draft that can kind of pull through even though the Tide is going to suffer in the earlier stages, or, or are you really relying on Mind Control to hit a good timing on that level 6? I think their lineup is always going to be okay because they have things like the Phoenix ET. Those yeah. are really good comeback supports, but Denied. like Bambo says, I think Tide should have just gone for the Iron Talon. He's slowing down his game way too much, and I, I know the mindset of Mind Control. He thinks, okay, I should try to get something done here. I'm in a one-on-two matchup, but this is not a lane that you're going to contest easily. Just coming across the yeah, going for them, though, is they have, like, a really small lineup. So we can catch up easily. Oh, S4! Oh, S4! Just getting straight up outplayed there by Fada. Underestimating the burst of this timber. And, oh my goodness. Hey, he did just not even have the chance to think of blinking away there. That is surprising. It's unexpected. It's <laughs> a good way to put it. Like, that should not happen. The reason why the odds didn't even cash out to the end is because you normally just don't see that happen. Yeah, uncharacteristic uh, mess up there from S4 in the laning stage. He's now going to hit that, that level 6, so we'll see if he's able to play his way around it or I'll look for a kill himself elsewhere. But, yeah, Fado and the Timbers are going to be very happy with that one. Grabs himself an Invis to, to bottle up as well. Let's see if he wants to do anything with that. Mind Control still just Radiant's halfway through level three, tower. back over towards the attack. top of Alliance Bulldog. He's on to the level five, and uh, he is finding a considerable amount of farm as well. 25 for four. He's pretty much on par with, uh, with the mid laner S4, so a lot of space thanks to the presence of Ake. Uh, but I guess the question is really, uh, I mean, Blitz, this kind of game, how does Ake keep himself relevant on the Enchantress and make sure that he doesn't fall behind? I think you just start to put, uh, contest into this into your own safe lane, take down the tower, just get active around the map, and 
Mind control's baiting right now. Yeah, Fada with the Invis rune looking to get in position. A huge I amount of burst. I before anything happens. I got for mind control. Yeah, He's certainly control. baiting, but he could be in trouble here. Okay, he's got the backup. They're going to be able to come in and punish EGM. Going to get themselves anything else. Mind control still alive. Uh, looks like Loader will be able to survive it. So it is just catching out the, the Shadow Demon there. The, the bait was successful, but Mind Control has got to take that long walk back to base. So still the progression of this tide being slowed down. Loda kind of missed miss Micro there. He blocked himself with Illusion. That was it. It, be, I mean, it looked incredibly close. One more touch indeed from the main man with the Metamorphosis would have pushed him over the edge. Uh, so you're going to see a smoke up now from Kuroki and Jerax as they'll head towards uh, potentially the top, maybe to, to try and catch Ake off guard. They're going to come in from, uh, from the river side. See how, how they are going to wrap around onto this one. It's going to be hard to, to catch Ake out of position at the way he's standing at the moment. They'll use the scan. They know that Ake is up there immediately as well. Radiant scanning behind their, their tier one just in case there's going to be a wrap around. They can kill right now. No, he's coming far out. Bulldog, he's got to be careful. Has got level six, so he has got a roar to disable one of them if he needs to get himself out safely. And he'll start to back off. The stomp coming through. will catch him, allowing him to close the gap. He's going to use the pounce, though, so no control to lock Bulldog in place. And it's a fair play by Liquid. Now the turnaround. Roar onto Kuroki. S4's turned up as well. Sonic Wave flies through. And S4 taking down a second as he ended up finishing up the one on the sidelines as well. Great rotation there from Alliance. And just uh, a bit of a, a failed smoke there from this. They, they tried to catch out the Beastmaster Blitz, but it doesn't end up going to plan. That just felt a little bit too awkward from Liquid. Like they were trying to force something that wasn't really there. And now that the Timberstock comes in, they don't have any disable for S4. He should not go down in this situation. Does use the majority of his mana, but does manage to get out and... Liquid just have to be a little bit less over eager. And bottom lane, mind control, and potentially a lot of trouble as well. The stomp might just save them. Just everything. It's a good job that Kuroki turns up. Making sure the mind control doesn't go down. And in fact, they might be able to turn this round into a kill. Again, the reactions from Timbersaw. Fana making sure he's in the right place at the right time. Take down a kill onto EGM. But I mean, overall, Bamba, this is a, it's a bit of a messy first nine minutes. Uh, do you feel there's a team that this is clearly favoring? I think this favors Alliance by a lot. Like, they're wasting a lot of time on Liquid Heroes for like counter ganks or like at top, the bounce, he just bounced away and they went in right away when he went bounce on cooldown. So they did like nothing for them. It's like they have some miscommunications. Bottom lane, EGM returning to help out Loader. Kuroki did hop him back with the sleep. Carter playing around as well, but EGM contains him in the disruption. And they'll just, they'll just back away here, Loader and EGM. They don't really have too much killing potential themselves with that metamorphosis on cooldown for Loader. Dyer's middle tower Liquid back up. I mean, this is at the same time has given Pepper to space around the mid. And S4 and Ake trying to make something happen with this as they'll, they'll move into the jungle. Actually, just going to take away this this small stack from the side of Liquid. Still. Stay back for the other side. I mean, do you, can S4 and Ake get a kill with this? This is the question. They've got 25 seconds, they'll have Sonic Wave back up. But at the moment, this is, I mean, it's just a single stack, but it's two of them. So managing to shut down the the economy a little bit of liquid and this is good news for for alliance but man will now come across and will realize that the damage has already been done and s4 will be able to walk himself away ake as well maybe in a spot of bother if father comes to cut him off but he's a little bit too late doesn't know that ake is there and ake and s4 getting away with uh, quite a profitable visit there into into liquid's jungle yeah nothing really gets slowed down as a result of that rotation for them they didn't really go for a failed gank they've got that ward up they've got vision into the jungle now it makes it harder for Liquid to get around the map. And like Bambo said, these three cores are doing so well for themselves already. On bottom lane, making it go on to Kuroki. Loader's Loader turning up as well. Loader jukes out the stomp. Kuroki in potential trouble, and he's taken down. But Tuma Man turning up will find the kill onto EGM. He can't follow through for a second, though. And at the same time, it's top lane. Fana makes the plays happen with the help of Jerax. And he'll punish Bulldog on the Beastmaster. So overall, a two for one across the map. S1 AK still sticking together in the mid, Dyer's holding hands, help. pushing down Dyer's on the tier one. The Liquid's Dyer's starting to take the favorable trades. Five. Mind Control has now hit his level six to Ravage at the ready. And it's going to make the journey over towards the mid lane at the same time. Fast is coming back over. The Croak is making his way down the middle. This will force Alliance to be a little bit wary of sticking around for this push, even though they've now added in a third. And uh, they'll, they'll just play it safe now, respecting the, the potential of a, a nice Ravage to, to set up a really good fight for Liquid. And Liquid should Radiant's be able to defend tower like every tower under attack. until they use any ultis. It's actually really hard for Alliance to fight them right now. 
I think my biggest concern right now, though, is just this Tidehunter. This is a 2000 net worth Tidehunter. I know a lot of people look at Tide as just like a Ravage Plus, but I think that's the wrong way to look at the hero. I think this hero scales pretty well. He enables your other two cores. Like, if you have two Dyer's matching cores against the enemy cores, Tidehunter will always win you that matchup, and right now that just isn't happening. Yeah, the Tide is all you have to, like, go in and bait spells. But if you have no network at all, it doesn't have that. Nice four against caught out by the sleep and well, mind control. No holding back with that ravage. Oh, Immediately no. blowing it at the same time. To the man going in onto loader. They've got the summary as well, bringing loader down low. And actually, oh, the summary kills him. I mean, I don't know why I'm surprised because summary is a decent spell. A liquid making the most of this. They're actually going to be able to find themselves a third and certainly alliance. Being out, just outplayed and caught out of position by Liquid. I mean, that's summary getting that kill on Loader and then just allowing Matuma Man to follow through, get himself involved in all three of those kills. Yeah, actually, he's got no thunder though. That's super greedy. Yeah, he could have used it on his Shadow Demon. Uh, there were options out of that one. Didn't didn't Jerry out actually have? Yeah, but he assumed that he was survive or yeah. something. It's like, no matter what happens there, he was gonna die. Oh, nice one. Well, jumps in. Let's get the first bring up to a man. Does have a sonic wave and he'll pop it. Great recovery kill from Alliance. The question is, can they find themselves anything else? Bulldog has a roar, just needs to get himself in range. In fact, S4 might even be able to pick up Croaky on his own. The one charges. I'm gonna save him. One more right click and S4's done it. Double kill. Mind control still being chased down. Okay, can't quite get in for the initial stun, but in fact, he doesn't need S4, making so much happen here with this double damage rune, and now Mind Control caught out as well. Bulldog shouting into the ears of the dead. A third kill for Alliance very quickly after Liquid took a good three kills themselves. And I mean, what, what happened there? Was that just Liquid hanging around too long, or just the, the S4 DD catching them off guard? The Slark was caught in a bad position, and like it kind of forced the rest of Liquid to connect to him. There was almost no way that they were going to make it past there, and he didn't have his ultimate either, right? The Slark he used it. I don't think so. He used it when he was trying to kill the TB, so he goes way far back going, where his team really can't help him out. But they try to commit anyways, and after that, the Queen of Pain had a free time. The one downside of Liquid's lineup is they don't have any reliable disables, which is why it's a little bit surprising that they've killed uh, as far as many times as they have. I mean, talking about S4 as well, the way that he's been playing it, he's 4-2-1, you know, he's been getting himself those kills. And, and Bamba, this is the item timing you're talking about. He, he's going to have a pretty good timing on the Orchid. And as you said, this is going to do wonders against Liquid's lineup. Yes, I feel like if he gets his Orchid in the next, like, two minutes, three minutes, he can, like, literally control the entire game. And if Alliance just pay off that and get towers with that, they should be able to push high ground quite soon. Radiance bottom tower is under I'd really attack. like to see this mind control tide just pick himself up. He has some ancient stacks to go back to, and I think this is the right idea. But instead, they're going to look for a fight around the Ravage, and Radiance bottom tower this is pretty is crucial. Attack. He needs to make this happen, because he's a level 7 tied with just a buckler at 15 minutes in. He's not going to have nearly Dyer's the same amount of impact as this Beastmaster attack. potentially could. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Top lane, S4, getting more gold into the bank as he looks to take himself a tier 1. There will be a reaction from Liquid. They are indeed sending the smoke wrap around up here as well. Loader joining the forces of EGM and S4. See if they get caught out though. Looking for the wrap around. EGM actually catching the bird mid dive, holding Jerex back. Mindstroke trying to get in position for the ravage. Pops it, does catch two on the tip. The question is, can they follow through? Nice sleep stomp onto Loader, but he gets the sun drop and now he backs off the sonic wave from S4. Now he's got to walk it off. They did blink into position for this, and they will punish that. So Liquid find the kill onto the Quam. The rest of the lines get away. But no, nonetheless, a kill for Liquid. Onto the, the S4 Queen of Pain that was slowly starting to get out of control. Did manage to buy up his second Oblivion staff. That was a classic S4 blink. Blink into five arrows. I mean, it was, it was an impressive Sonic way, but yeah, not, not getting any of the kills. Not quite what they needed in EGM. Actually, just hiding up here. Oh, is he going to find the courier? Radiant oh, the courier going to find him. <laughs> Actually, that's true. All right. Oh, they he, know now. He's been rumbled. He has got a TP ready, and Jarek's no way of stopping it. So EGM, I guess himself out. He gets himself out. Like, cl classic Jerry there, Bamba. Hey, Jerry, my boy. <laughs> Makes it happen. All right, this game is sloppier than it needs to be for Alliance. After seeing the mid game, Alliance did a really good job of setting themselves up post laning phase to take over this game. And like Bambo said, at that point, if you've got any sort of lead, you can just dominate, but... Oh, but Superman! I think they're allowed to make a couple mistakes, though. Bit of a mess up there. Forgiving lineup. You think so? Way more forgiving than Team Liquid. Liquid in general just tend to not pick very forgiving strategies. I think 
Crow's mentality is always going to be favoring high execution where it matters, even though it seems a little bit risky. Like if Alliance gets one, one good fight, they can kill your entire base. Yeah. That's always going to be the danger. Whereas Alliance, if you look at Team Liquid's lineup, they don't have... Yeah, they don't really have any objective taking heroes. Yeah. They can't Roshan very easily. They can't take towers very easily. It's just a straight up team fight and get kills. Alliance can do a good job of just denying them around the map. Even if they get these one-off pickoffs, it doesn't mean too much to Alliance like Bambo said. Whereas Alliance's lineup is so punishing. Now Mind Control now, cleaning up these stacks. And this is going to now give him pretty much the, the goal to finish off his mechanism. So something else that Liquid are going to be able to offer to these, these five-man fights. But as we, uh, as we say that, indeed, S4 now with the Orca complete, and immediately they want to do something big with it. They want to catch someone off with the Orca reveal. S4 and AK smoking up, and they the movement into the jungle. They've got vision onto Kuroki, and with this nice deep warding that they've managed to achieve over Liquid's half of the map. Let's see who S4 is able to catch out. Kuroki returning over to join the rest of his friends. And it looks like off the back of that, S4 and Ake, unlikely to find anything straight away with this smoke. Liquid putting some pressure in on the mid. S4 and Ake, maybe looking to catch out the fight from behind, but it's the full fight man of Liquid. Yeah, that illusion did so much already more. Begins. It already oh, begins. Oh, they were hard to kill too. Do you notice yeah. the timber use combo? It's like he's so disgusting, that combo. See now that the Liquid may be reacting to the, the push of Bulldog. But at the same time, a little bit wary that the S1 Ake are still off the map. Kuroki coming around. It's Matuba Man leading Dyer's the way of the Shadow Blade. Might attack. catch S4, but obviously himself not enough lockdown to, to dispatch the Quat needs a plus one. And Alliance. I suppose actually got eyes on to Matuba Man. But uh, seeing the presence of Fight, I realize he can't jump into that one. And the Alliance will simply get themselves away from this lane. And meanwhile, of course, Loader has been continuing to jungle up and uh, is sitting at the top of the net worth board. 9.3k gold on this Terrorblade compared to the 7k of Matuma Man. And this slug's starting to fall behind. I still think the biggest story is this Tidehunter. With 4.4k, there's no way that's good. Look how quickly he just pushes out the lane right now. And it's really hard because Liquid don't want to commit having heroes on the map. Remember in the VP game against Na'Vi, wherever they had to show the Tidehunter, then uh, Navi knew that BP wasn't ready to fight. It's a similar situation here because you're showing your Tidehunter to push out the lanes. They're gonna have to get something going with the Slark soon, but he doesn't really have burst potential and it's not easy for him to kill anybody on the enemy team. EGM can always just disrupt himself. Oh, he's already used the disruption here, so Matumba Man actually got a bit of a free pass to try for a kill and indeed jumps in onto EGM. EGM popping the one charges, he's gonna try for the TP out. EGM! Oh, he makes it! Oh my goodness! Absolutely just denying Matuma Man the chance to find these kills that he's absolutely hungry for with his Shadow Blade. I mean, EGM, boys. <laughs> now they have to send the tide again, and it slows down whatever progression that they had, because this Alliance knows. The stock's actually wasting so much time just trying to find kills. It hurts him so much. He already fell behind. Do, though. They could just keep farming until your tide like, gets a blink or something. Alright, eyes onto S4. He's gonna blink himself out. Immediate TP and nothing that they could do about that one. Mind control not, not close enough to think about using the Ravage to cancel it. This game, I mean, the, the, the pace that it's taken, I mean, Bamba, it, it seems to be favoring the lineup of Alliance because they, they constantly have loaded getting this, this insane amount of farm on the Terra Blade. Pretty much, like, I feel like Liquid, they have, like, nothing to engage, they have, like, nothing to jump in. For now. Dyer's middle tower is under and they can't attack. really fight Alliance when they Radiance see them coming. Tower is under attack. So they got pretty much nothing to do. They do have a lot of different team fight though, and there's still ways for them to get into this game. The big issue though is again Tidehunters is just 800 net worth above an Enchantress that was mainly supporting. And that's why you're seeing so much of a dedicated attack. effort to just get them farm right now, because that's what you have to do in a game like this. You just get your Tide farm. And Slark's trying to make something happen around the map so Alliance keep on their toes, but it's not real pressure. You saw how much he struggled to kill a Shadow Demon. How's he going to ever kill a Terrorblade? Up, but at bottom. Yeah, with some backup, he's got a good chance of part of this early boss pickup working. Bronda's very much saying that to Loader turns around with Thunder into the Sonic Wave. They'll burst down with 
to him, a man. They will end up losing uh, Loda in return, but S4 links out, TP's away. So again, it's liquid. They do try for a three-man gank. They get the kill, but they lose the slark in the process. I mean, is, is that worth it for Liquid? They Bamba? commit five heroes. Yeah. While the Beastmaster, the Ange, just farming. Radiance middle There's no way this worth it. Attack. This all comes back just to the tight. Like, he doesn't, he has no ability, he has no engage. Yeah. If they had some way to force a fight, they could even just... If he had an earlier mech, for example, the best part of tight is that you can just run down lanes, but... MC's had a rough game so far, and Beastmaster's Radiant's game plan is a lot easier. You just stick in this top area, Owen, and you never leave it. Yeah. You can push in whenever you see Liquid go off the map. If Liquid decides to engage his high bottom, then you split push with your Blink Dagger and your Necro Book. I mean, as you guys pointed out, just the farm at Bulldog, absolutely on parallel to the Matumba Man slug. That's not going to be a good sign at all. And Matumba Man, again, desperately looking for action with the Shadow Blade, but three heroes in alliance. May want to try for Ake. Here we go, jumping in. Ake gets the heal off in the burst. It's just not enough, but with the Sunray coming through, Mind Control's there as well. They might have to blow the Ravage if they want this kill. It's taking them some time. One more touch. Oh, there we have it. They will finally get it, but we're seeing just how much work it's taking Liquid to, to get these simple kills. Again, five arrows coming oh, in for an Enchantress. Middle tower has been denied. Yeah, like Bambo says, you have to commit the entire team yeah. every time you're going to make one of those maneuvers around the map. And you might lose one hero here or there, but you're going to open up the other side of the map for the rest of the heroes in the game. And we're seeing that right now as Matumba Man is starting to pick up a little bit of farm during this time period, but... Still not in the best position is the three cores from Alliance. That's the big thing here that all three of the cores are keeping up. I think Liquid though, Bambo are approaching a point where they can fight. They have level two egg. The timber saw is massive. But they have to like somehow force the fight. That's the problem. There's no way they can force the fight. Alliance is just going to keep dodging, keep ratting. And Bulldog with the, the blink, the level two net crow. 1300 gold as well. And uh, there we have. So just finishing off the level 3 Necro. So Blink level 3 Necro. I mean, he himself, if he gets to jump on someone, he certainly kill some of these uh, squishier heroes on Liquid. That's the solo kill on anybody except maybe the Timber. Yeah. If you have the boars up, you can burn through the mana of the Tidehunter pretty quickly. Let's see what Alliance can achieve here. As for has the Sonic Wave at the ready. I feel like Alliance is playing way too safe though. They could have done a lot more with their lead. Yeah. What I mean, would you like to see them do? I would like to see them like, abuse the SD. They can even just push towers without committing at all. Timber man coming around here with the shadow blade. Fodder sword is starting to move it on TGM. Positive demonic purge onto the timber. But here we have Timber Tram trying to go for it. Good amount of damage duked out by the disruption, but Fodder. No messing around, jumps in, bursts down the Shadow Demon at the same time. Alliance looking to put pressure up top, but the TP reaction is coming in from Liquid. That will stop the push. So Liquid getting away with a kill this time and not having to commit too much to that one. Still able to find action elsewhere on the map. S4, it's got an Invis though, looking for Jerax. Might need to use the Sonic Wave for this one. Now it looks like the Ruckless is going to be enough, and there we have it with the Soul Burn damage. They'll take down the Phoenix. S4, now sitting on 3k gold on top of his Ogre Club and uh, Orchid, I guess, uh, is he going for a BKB here? He should, he should. That's why he can just blink in on the tide. So There's like the two or three, one. yeah, the two or three times that he went in, he just got counter-initiated on by the ET, gets blown up. They have more than enough burst damage to kill him before uh, BKB. Like Bambo says, S4 does like to play pretty risky with the blinks. And it looks as well that, uh, I mean, with the, with the Ogre Club picked up by Lodo, do you think he's feeling forced to build a BKB himself as well on the Terra Blade because of Liquid's lineup? It is really good, this game. Yeah. Like, for all of them. Like, with BKBs, Liquid, they basically have, like, no damage except for the Slark. So they basically have 10 seconds of free range. Uh -huh. I'm just actually going to try for a bit of action onto Bulldog. Bulldog in a bit of trouble here. Loader hasn't got the mana to offer up his life for sudden. In fact, Matuba Man having to back up, unable to commit fully and get the kill. And Bulldog Dyer's lives, gets himself out of there. Dyer's and Liquid unable to find awful. anything at, at that place at the main time. S4 putting the pressure on top. The weird reaction as far as Jerax move in. I guess this is... always gains more. Yeah, it's... Whatever Liquid does. And, th and this is something as well. I mean, catching out S4, they, they don't really have a Jeez. huge amount of lockdown, do they, Liquid, to deal with this Queen of Pain? Oh, other than yeah. committing a Ravage or, or timing a Stomp run. 
I still think things are okay for either team. Like this game isn't even close to being determined yet just because there's a lot that can happen. As a bottom, Aki's gonna go down. And finally, a successful pick off for Matumba Man. Yeah, this is good news for Matumba. The fact that he can get away with solo kills light down the edge. If the guys can save and at the same time, they're going to top and hit the. Oh, nice Bloodstone deny. Very nice indeed, making sure that Unlike Golder XP goes the way of these two. And to commit the Sonic way there from, from S4. So, I mean, as you said, there's, there's certainly, certainly good points here for Liquid. It's, and, and indeed, if you look at the draft, they have got ways of dealing with a farm terribly. That's, that's for sure, isn't it, Blitz? I mean, as soon as he grabs Ags, Octarine, anything like that, at some point, I think the discussion was Dagon 5, right? And top lane, mind control. Here with the blink reveal, jumps into Toss 4, but can't quite finish it off. Relying on Fada to chase this down. Good silence, oh, no. holding back the timber. There's 4, blinks away, TP's out. Ooh, they're not going to find it. Oh, Kuroki as well, throwing out the Earth Spitter, nearly funny, but S4 just too slippery. And uh, an unsuccessful uh, blink reveal and uh, use of the Ravage. Same time, though, mid lane. Matumba Man really starting to pick up the pace on this Slark. He's just found himself a second solo pickoff, so things are looking up on the Slark front. But... It is Beast Messaging that I feel like Alliance could have pushed. Yeah. Could have got an objective. Like he's such a bad dad. And up top as well, Liquid find themselves another EGM caught out. And Liquid now starting to climb. Ahead of Alliance, it is incredibly even as we saw. Alliance had a slightly 3k now, it's gone back down to pretty much bare bones. But yeah, Matuma Man, he's, he's got to be very happy that he's been able to find these kills. He's now got a basher on top of the Shadow Blade and the Echo Saber. And I guess at this point, he can continue to go for that kind of play style. And so as we're seeing, if you're taking down a Beastmaster on your own, you can Radiant's certainly kill off the SC or attack. the Enchantress or, or even the Quop if you catch a kind of post blink. Uh, Matuma Man can kill them. For sure. But the Lions playing way too passive. There's no way they should like just leave Liquid to whatever they want. Yeah, I think I saw what you meant, Babo. You you wanted them to just farm out once they get the core items that yes. you can start to take fights. But Alliance were just getting picked off around the map. Like you can you lose one or two heroes on the opposite side of the map because they have to commit five. But losing heroes like this is the worst possible thing, and they might just run into a trap. Oh, and the Nestle coming up it. Sonic Wave in five seconds. BKB's popped immediately. They're looking to beat down onto the Titans, but Mind Control at the moment walking this off. Max popped and he's going to live. At the same time, a Tumor Man jumping in for the backside. Looking for EGM. The Sonic Wave flies through Mass 4. They'll burst down Fada. Looking for the Metal Horse. Oh, Punching it to Mind Control. They don't have enough damage to kill off the Titan Hunter. But Tumor Man is silenced. So can they kill him? They can. Double kill for S4. Great play here from the Quop, securing the Steam Fight for Alliance. Liquid will just have to get the rest of them out of there. But taking down two, Roshan's up. Alliance will make a movement straight into there. I mean, there's a good play in the back at Alliance for Matuma Man to get a pick off, but great reaction from S4, hitting the Sonic Wave and landing that Orchid onto Matuma Man. So he had no hopes of getting home alive. That's what I mean. Like, they have the BKBs. They can literally just run over Liquid. They can't do anything until they run out. Same they're not done. They've jumped in. They've found Mind Control. Ake with the Micro. Bring the Sentinel around. One more touch. Oh, the mech's there. Keeping Mind Control alive. And they finish this one off. S4 a little bit short on the Blink. And now she's stuck in the trees. Fada, he's looking to burst these boys down. He's found one. S4 blinking down again. And Fada, can he they find know he's this? Out of They've got him. Fada's doing it here. Bringing it back around for Liquid. A second kill for the Timbersaw. Very nicely played there. There was no need to make that play. They could have just gone for the Roshan. Zero chance that Liquid are going to contest it without their Slark. Then they disengage, get out. But it's it's the side missions. Mm -hmm. It's saying, okay, well, we're going to get this Roshan anyways. So while you guys do that, we're going to commit to these kills. And then it just becomes a disaster. No, Alliance would have their eyes on the prize. Yeah. They're Double only thinking of these damage. mini pickoffs, but... Those pickoffs don't really change the impact of the game, Owen. Like, if they kill the Tidehunter there, the game doesn't really change. But getting the Aegis right there in that situation, like we can't fight them anymore. Oh, but look now, at this. Because of that bad mistake, Liquid, they're going to get Roshan themselves. They're, they're, this is huge. I mean, the double damage obviously helping out, but Alliance not in the area to do anything about this. And I mean, as we can see, the overall net worth is still close, but the momentum suddenly is definitely going the way of Liquid's now. I mean, all it takes is one or two fights like that where you were so careful. Alliance was so careful throughout this entire game. They were losing like one hero every two minutes and then they started just losing heroes left and right. Then they win a team fight, just immediately going for the Roshan, play it safe. But instead they decide to take a side mission, go for a kill on a, a Tidehunter. Lose the Aegis instead. 
Well, it's kind of understandable though. If you win a team fight, you're gonna get hyped. You just wanna go on. You wanna get more. Yeah, you see, you see a potential kill. You try and go for it. But I'm just gonna continue to come out now for the side of Liquid. It's a favorable play. You've got Maelstrom uh, on its way out uh, to to Matumba Man. Uh, no slot for it at the moment though. Uh, actually, no, sorry, yeah, okay, he's traded that, so he's put it up. No TP on him at, at this point. Top lane, S4. Found in the tree line. Immediately blinking and TPing himself away. And Fado, of course, with the blink dagger. So this, this is something that I, I guess this is great against the club. S4 blinks away. If he hasn't got a TP, Fado can still close the gap and burst him down relatively easily. Interestingly enough, Matama Man decides to go for the Maelstrom, by the way. Yeah. Just additional attack speed. I Pretty good. For the illusions as well. Yeah. You're never going to get something like a Battle Fury on the Slark. I'll take that. Oh. What an odd situation. Alliance before the Aegis, I think they could have just started sieging towers like Mamba wanted to see with the Shadow Demon and the Terrorblade. But now they're in a position where they pretty much have to wait out the Aegis. You don't want to fight into the Aegis. Start. I don't think they have to, though. I think they can still easily force a fight. They get one good pick up with the Beastmaster. They just need to abuse the Hawk. But they're like, they don't want to do anything for some reason. I'm a Timber Man. Uh, he's got an invis really there. Uh, this is going to be really nice to potentially set up a kill. Uh, longer duration of invis. And he's, he's going to spot out Loader. Each gem is, in fact, pouncing pretty early here. Now, each gem will be able to contain him with the disruptions to my man. With this follow through Shadow Blade, he still wants to try and go for this kill, and he will. He will indeed get it. Now, he's got to get himself out on the retreat. Uh, the back of the Jarex, he should have no problem with that at all. Also, Kuroki in the neighborhood. Dire structures. So another kill for Matsuma Man. Top lane. As for blinking himself away from Fada Fada. He's going to go for the chase here. Going to play around S4. Able to catch him. S4. Ready to turn around. Just toying with the timber. And as the rest of the quick continue with this push down mid lane. Radiant's the timber man. And at the moment, 7 3 4. He's, he's really picked up the, the performance this game. And uh, he's looking to be in a very, very good place indeed. And it's just a question is how, how are Alliance going to deal with the point where the liquids start to push down these lanes and start to try and break the high ground? But they can barely break the high ground. They have like, no damage at all. It's gonna take ages. And while that happens, they can spam them down. Yeah. They need to win a team fight to break the high ground. They did use the four right there, which might make getting that tier two power, tower at bottom a reality. But at the same time, the Queen of Pain is inevitably gonna take this top tier two. And that's gonna open up the map a little bit for a split push for both the Queen of Pain and the Beastmaster, but... Not sure. This game is still Dyer's a little bit wonky. Is under attack. Like, you still need the AC on S4, which is what I presume he's gonna go for. That's almost always his build, right, on Queen of Pain? Or yeah, AC or Shiva. Yeah, I think he prefers the AC. I almost always see him go Orchid BKB AC, just to make absolute sure that he can't really die. At the same time, bottom tower my lack for damage. Attack. A lot of this game is now going to come down to how much this Terror Blade can do. Loader at the moment. Sitting at 2.6k. But uh, as we see, Matuma Man's really closed the gap between them now with regards to now. We're only 1k behind this Terror Blade now. Up towards the top, S4 eyes onto Kuroki and uh, the full. Full team of lines moving in, so I see if Fada's gonna be enough to save him. Comes in, looking for the burst on the back line. S4 pops the BKB, raw to control on Fada. They'll take down one. Now with the Orchid, they might be able to find the Timbersaur as well, Alliance. Very nice play there. It'll be a Bloodstone deny. But nonetheless, forcing the Timbersaur into his grave. Alliance find the picks. And uh, looking like they'll, they'll just back off straight away. At least load it. Yep, TPing out. They don't want to stick around. Now where the Matuma Man may be coming in, trying to find some. Some of the people that have been left behind, but Alliance, they move back as a team. Everyone's gone out. Now Matuma Man won't be able to find anything this time. They should be keeping making moves like this. Just abuse the Hulk, find a solo hero, and force like the Timber in a bad position. Yeah. Timber is not the godlike hero that he thinks he is right now. I think Fada with the Shivas feels really comfortable, but Alliance have so much magic damage that they can burst him down really quickly with that Orchid. He doesn't have any way to dispel that, and... They're doing a good job of taking advantage of him right now, but could have happened a little bit sooner. Now the Aegis is gone, though, opening up more opportunities for Alliance to make moves like that and not have to commit to straight up 5v5s. It is the AC, by the way, for S4. I like this build. It turns it more into a core. It helps out your overall team fight. Yeah, I like when clubs start getting DPS. Bloodthorn is going to be really useful this game too for him. 
Just because it seems like Liquid are reluctant to grab BKBs of their own. They're still playing so scared though. There's no reason at all to be scared. Yeah. Oh, to my man, the Shadow Blade, he's gonna find that S4. He's gonna try for a... Just get a bit of damage down on him, but not enough lockdown to deal with a quap on his own. We're getting into position. Uh, the, meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Kuroki and Fada just pushing out the bane. That's still a good six minutes or so before Roshan is back up. But uh, I mean, at this point, as you said, uh, Bambo, it definitely feels like Alliance playing very scared, and, and Liquid, they're, they're taking advantage of this. As we can see, the full five man of Liquid just feeling very confident to come over Alliance's side of the map at this point. Yeah, I don't feel like Liquid wants to be allowed to just run around like that. Should be picked up at least once. Yeah, he's playing with impunity right now, and... It's like he doesn't care at all. In the beginning, they were punishing him. Like, they were setting up opportunities, but now Liquid are picking up quite a bit of items. They've got the Hex available on the Timber Saw, which is going to be really useful, just because they do lock... or they do lack lockdown, aside from the Tide Ravage. They need some way to commit after... This game's still kind of even though. Like I, either side can win. It really just depends on who starts the fight. Oh, mind control jumping in. He jammed with the defensive disruption by himself sometime, but it'll still go down. Now Liquid, the full fight down. At the same time, Alliance, they're looking to not react at the moment. He can't be straight this. away for the push here. Loader has Metamorphosis available. Liquid, they need to respond to this. TP starting to come in. Loader, let's commit the Metamorphosis. Now he will. Mind control jumping in, but Loader. What's the BKB? He's ignoring these zeros. He's just hitting onto the racks on the bottom side, on the side. They'll lose Bulldog though. Matuma Man punching in onto S4. He gets the blink off just in time. Rest of them on the way out. And now S4 gets caught out by Fada. A second kill for Liquid on the defense. They will lose the tier three, but finding two cores. Now Liquid will be, will be very happy with the way that they dealt with that. that they forced the out. BKB as well yeah. onto Loda. I think this is going to mean Oh, Liquid just decided to go for the push. They've already started to circle around. They've got the Phoenix Egg and the Tide Ravage. I don't think either of those spells were committed. They know that the BKB is down, the Queen of Pain's dead. This is going to be one of the better opportunities that they have to just oh, push in uncontested. Talking about being pushed in. Kuroki shoves Matuma Man into the face of Ake. And another kill for this slot. Matuma Man, he has had an incredible game after, after a start where we constantly saw him struggling to find the kills. Now he's Radiance become an insane powerhouse. And now it's Liquid, Radiance the ones to start to knock on the doors of Alliance. Alliance still with three dead. Ter terrible aid loader has got that Scardi complete. Liquid showing a lot of strength, but look at this, jumping straight in, Fada with the X, another kill, and Liquid at this point. They're, they're just playing the better game of Dota 2 here, Bambo. They're not playing Alliance by far. I feel like Alliance is making all the wrong calls. Yeah. I think this is often Alliance's weakness, is they can get these leads, Owen. They can build these kinds of tempo games, but then it feels like they just get a little bit too lost. Like, they, they don't want to take any risks whatsoever. Yeah, I always play the same On to Fada, Loader and Amber Porto starting to lay down the damage of Mind Control. Comes in with a Ravage and Fada turning in with the Shackra. The Timber away, he'll take down Bulldog. Loader has to pop the BKB and go for the TPL once again. And meanwhile, down at the bottom, a Timber Man, he's taking your melee Rex, and what are you going to do about it? Absolutely nothing. He's got a Shadow Dance if he needs to. He's actually going to use it to get himself out. No, he surely wants to go back in and finish that one off. I guess he's playing it safe. Uh, a little bit unfortunate. Tower, yeah, he, he wants attack. to get that. Right. He got to get that melee rise. Actually, he wants to get the kill. Turns to S4. Nearly gets it. Lots of sword. We'll remove the sun. It's S4 hexed up and Fada gets the kill. They'll burst down a third. Liquid absolutely destroying Alliance at this point as Loader. He's going down as well. This is, may have felt like a slow start by Liquid, but at this point, we're, we're just seeing the, the kind of matchup that we'd expect from a team to come second at the Major, compared to a team that fell in the 9th to 12th position. This is just a total outplay from Liquid. The weird thing is, I agree with Mambo. I think Alliance had a lot of different openings. It all started with, especially that move at bottom. If they hadn't gone for the kills, I feel like yep. you get the Aegis on the side of Loda, it becomes nigh impossible for Liquid to engage a fight. You're never going to be able to fight a Terrorblade that has a Shadow Demon behind him, BKB, and an Aegis. Like that's, you have to commit a Ravage for that, but after that fight happens, Fada picks up a bunch of items. Mossy finds one or two pickoffs using that Aegis. Loda, pops the BKB there. Trying the best to hold here, Alliance. Focus on Tafada. Getting 
himself away. Bulldog has got the roll. Who will use it? They will find the kill onto the Timbersaw. The Lions get anything else, though. Looks like Liquid quick to retreat. The Tier 4s have been taken down. The main Ancient exposed. Alliance with their backs against the wall. I mean, how, how do they pull back from a position like this, Blitz? There's no more split push. You just have to take a fight. Hope it goes well. The good news for them is that they can still push incredibly fast with Terrorblade and Shadow Demon, like we've been saying throughout this entire time. The problem now is their timing window is narrowed down like crazy. You've you got a go lot of different the, items. I'll win your little move. Yeah. And hope you win a fight somehow. I mean, I guess it kind of just the whole feel of this game is shown by the fact that you look at mind control now, and obviously ahead of Bulldog, he's he's slowly managed to have this recovery. He's now got the refresher all done as well on the Tide Hunter. Uh, slow and steady, seeming to be winning the race here, ready for Liquid. Yeah. Most importantly about his hero too is he's been really patient with the ravages, oh, even though the lines have BKBs. The main thing is you have to wait it out, and now the Aegis is available. Lines kind of forced into this situation. Do you go for the defense? Do you decide to all in? Because Liquid have so much map control on you now. Axe picked up as well on Phoenix. I see. This is when you know the game's going good. That's I like never see that item. Uh, is it any good this game, Mambo? Nah, I want to stay here. Really. Yeah. It's like if someone gets caught off in a weird place. Team Megan caught off in a weird place. Alliance in Liquid's jungle. Liquid ready to respond, but to a man jumps in. Unable to get the Abyssal Blade on Tears 4. Nijia blink out. Now he's yeah, just looking to control the slot. Try and buy the space for the rest of his teammates to get away. He'll have to give up his own life for it. EGM beaten to a pulp. S4 on the tree line as well. Bulldog still hanging around, but S4 jumping back in. But Matuma Man, I post the BKB, walks it off. With the least forcing out a BKB charge, but Alliance, they certainly need a bit more than that. In fact, Matuma Man coming back round. He's going to see Bulldog, and he's going to go in for the kill. Jumps immediately in. No escape for the dog. And at the same time, though. yeah, Kuroki being focused down by S4. S4 jumps in, but immediately the Hex catching the Quap out of position. The sleep into the split. S4 pops the BKB, will get the blink off. Alliance trying to move in with Loader. They've got the control for Fada now. He gets the Timber Chain out. Meanwhile, in the river, S4 jumping across. Looking to cut off Kuroki, the Sonic Wave. Just getting the clip on to Kuroki. They will take down the Elder Titan as well as the Tide. So Alliance managing to do a little bit of damage to, to Liquid's lineup, but still, he's it, it, kind of caused the, the Timber Saw and the Slark, which uh, kind of looks to be borderline unkillable at this stage. Yeah, things don't get easier with the Phoenix Egg. Ag's ultimate either, and EGM looks like he's going to be another pickoff from Atama Man as he moves forward. This should be very quick and easy for them. And 13 deaths on this Shadow Demon, and lucky for some, certainly for Alliance this game. Uh, S4 has got the Blood Fawn done. As we're seeing, this is a time that yeah, the Slark, he's got his BKB already. I think they just get Aegis and they can end the game pretty much. See how uh, yeah, the Liquid want to go. And indeed, looks like going to play relatively safely. Coming across here, but this is always spotted out by the Ward of Alliance. They know Matumba Man's in the neighborhood. And the line's been, uh, been drawn here by Kuroki, yeah, just uh, to find that they want to just play it safe, shut down the final tier two, take the final set of racks, no need to, to YOLO it too hard and uh, go in for the all-in push on the ancient, because, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of saying it lightly, but, you know, Liquid, they're in a very comfortable position, please. Yeah, they can just allow a line to crash into them, and that's usually going to be the smart play here. They can get aggressive, but I would, write, I would prefer them to go for something like the Aegis. Yeah before they make that kind of move, but Alliance might actually just walk in themselves. And this is the kind of play that you have to make. You're in a desperate situation. Liquid don't know that this is happening. Oh, it's going to work nicely as well with the blood form. Crits ripping through Roche, though turning up as well. So they are going to have the Aegis for this uh, inevitable defense that, that Liquid's going to force out from the side of Alliance. That's for It's going to be the one that to hold. Change much, though. The moment your Aegis hero dies, like, the rest of your team is also probably dead. And then you're going to be alone. I think a lot matters on how Mind Control gets his double Ravage off, because if he can hit majority of heroes, then Bambo's right. It won't really matter if you have the Aegis or not. The Queen of Pain isn't really the issue. Like, it's everybody else, because all of Liquid's heroes are so tanky now. You can't burst Jerex anymore. You can't silence him because he's got that Lotus Orb. Crow's got that Yule Scepter to protect himself. We have it. Liquid knocking on the final set of doors that the Alliance have left standing. 
What's the reaction going to be? Oda. And the team smoked up, trying to get a good position to jump in on Liquid. But as we're saying, they've got to be very careful of the jump in potential from Mind Control. That double ravage sitting at the ready. Ultimate Man comes back in once more. The Stomp Dying holding Loader back. And at this point, Alliance, what can they do? What can they do to hold back Liquid? To a man, in again, in and out, chipping away at the tier three. I mean, at this point, it really does feel like Liquid just closing the final doors on victory. You guys keep doing this all day. Like, uh, Alliance has to go. There's just no safe move for them to make, especially since they're right outside their base. Hold on, for the roll, will catch down to Matuma Man, low still drop down, the Sonic Wave flying for as well, but Matuma Man still alive for the time being, Fodder moving in the BKB port, they found oh, the kill, the they take it down, so now comes the Ravage, the first one, catching out four, swooping in the Phoenix, back out again, now it's a split from the sidelines, bringing Loader low, he'll take Ake's life though, to fuel himself back up and try and get into the fight, Aegis has been lost on S4, look at the silence, onto Jarex, making sure the dive out's not there, Hex onto S4, making sure he can't jump through, chasing in for more, looks like Liquid, and just back up for now, get the rest of them out of there. But at the least, uh, a good hold for Alliance, managing to find that kill onto Matumba Man. He had so many ways to save him. He had his own he way, though. Yeah. I think they assumed that he was going to get the Shadow Dance off. Because if you're able to get Shadow Blade and your BKB off, then you definitely had time to click the R button. So if he was able to get the Shadow Dance off, regens up, you fight around your tied double ultimate, then the game just ends right there. But instead, it just gets unnecessarily prolonged. As for Bulldogs starting to push down the mid, I mean, I, in a dream world, they'd love to try and force the buy back out from a Timber Man, but it certainly feels with the position that Alliance are in, it's unlikely that's going to happen. 25 seconds, and the Slark will be back. Alliance trying to get the best to hold on and all. Bulldogs being caught out. Spotted out by Fada. I mean, he, his Timber Saw play has been absolute. Merciless. He's 13 4 12. Literally just cutting through the lineup of Alliance this whole game. And uh, a lot of strong performances from Liquid as the, this game reaches the kind of the 50th minute around the corner. And not a lot of options for Alliance to bring themselves back into this one. You can't really ask your Timbersaw to do more than solo kill a Queen of Pain mid. Yeah. Like that's going to be such a huge advantage for you uh, mentally and more importantly, just for morale. Just like you see that happen, you're gonna think like, great, we're in such a good position. At the same time, Alliance aren't out of this game. I wanna stress that. They still have ways to fight around. Uh, it's just really difficult. But they're not completely out. They can still have another fight happen like that. Let's see what they can do here. To my man, just trying to ignore them and, and get the damage down onto the racks. They'll have pulled up back up in 10. The ancient being beaten down by, upon by the creeps themselves. Dying Alliance, they've got a lot on their hands here. At the same time, you've got S4 Radiant looking for a bit of split push. They may need him to back up because Liquid on the verge of mega creeping Alliance. Okay, what's the BKB? Radiant Trying to ward Liquid off still. Just this final range rack standing between Alliance and mega creeps. And there's Matuma Man jumping in onto the dough, taking oh, down Edge. And yeah, here we have it. Oh, they're going, the they're going for the base race. They're going to go for the base race. It's going to work. I mean, they've got a fortification, Liquid. And Liquid already no. taking their... Uh, that's our foul. Butter's turned up. He's stopping this this, this nonsense from Alliance. And Liquid tunneling through the ancient of Alliance. The roll will come through. Double kill from Fado as he cleans up in his own base. EGM, he's about to have his backside split open. There we have it. And Liquid, they'll take the win. GG is called Alliance. Tried their best.